talked about this concept of a balanced life. And I challenged you with the thought of imagine life is a game in which you're juggling five balls. The balls are called work, family, health, friends, and integrity. And you're keeping all of them in the air. But one day you finally come to understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. The other four balls, family, health, friends, integrity are made of glass. If you drop one of these, it will be irrevocably scuffed, nicked perhaps, or even shattered. And I hope over the last two weeks that you guys took some time away over 4th of July to focus on your four glass balls, knowing that, listen, real estate is not life or death. It will bounce back. It's essentially a big rubber ball that will continue to bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce, right? And, and I wanted to, to make sure that we took time and that everybody took time over the 4th of July to focus on you and your families. And we talked about the six life's disciplines of a, a a wealthy person's life and the personal thermostat and the personal thermostat focusing on yourself, your spiritual, physical time, money, and growth. And that if you want to truly live a balanced life, you have to focus on those, this, those six aspects of your life. So I hope everybody took time over 4th of July to do that, to recharge your batteries, knowing that we're coming back into an incredibly strong market. We have to take advantage of the market at the moment. And lastly, I would challenge you with this. I think these are the first three things that go away in somebody's life when they're super busy or they're out of balance is the three determiners of sound judgment, diet, exercise, and rest. It's the three easiest things that you get rid of when you're super, super busy. And when you show up super stressed or when you come up super short with your kids or with your clients or things like that, it's usually because those three things, you've dropped those three things. And we got to make sure that we're focusing on your diet, exercise, and rest so that you can show up both personally and professionally in the best way for your clients and your family moving forward. So I do that as a way to kind of close the loop or circle back the loop after having a lot of people took some time off over 4th of July to make sure that people focused on that and that we're focusing on the holistic person here that, so that you guys can serve your families and your clients at the highest level. Cool, so in the month of June, we, we I'll recap this in a second, but we had one of the best uh, months in company history. It was absolutely unbelievable. And not only was it the best in company history, you'll see across a lot of major metro or a lot of major metrics. It was honestly one of the best all time months in Milwaukee Metro MLS history. And I'll give you a little bit more of that perspective here shortly. But with that, because so many people had a uh, success in the month of June, we had a bunch of people, they're getting uh, big raises in the month of June. And so we're gonna go through a bunch of people to hear this celebrate in our June cappers list. First up, Alyssa Burkoff uh, lives down the street from my childhood home, an incredibly generous person, lives right down the street from the office in Whitefish Bay, walks into work, uh, has an incredibly beautiful family. Her husband is one of the top OBGYNs in the city of Milwaukee. Jonathan, they're great people, good people to serve by. Alyssa, we're proud to be in business with you. Congrats on capping in the month of June. Next up, this person challenges me every single day because she lives by the phrase that I totally believe in. What is that phrase? It's success breeds complacency, complacency breeds failure, only the paranoid survive. And if there's one thing I know about Corey Bolt, a positive, which sounds crazy, a positive is Corey is always paranoid about her business. There's a reason why she went from nothing to 36 million overnight in the matter of two years. Corey Bolt, congrats on capping in the month of June. Next up, the mother of four, her husband runs a big business in downtown Milwaukee. She's incredibly talented. Side note, played uh, soccer for the University of Wisconsin women's soccer team uh, over in Madison. Lauren Foy, congrats on capping in the month of June. Awesome stuff. Next up, uh, former architect has an incredible eye for design. Tammy Herpel has two young, beautiful daughters in Whitefish Bay. Tammy Herpel, congrats on capping in the month of June. Next up, TJC, Tamika Jones Clay. TJC runs multiple businesses from a daycare to various other things in Milwaukee. Jumped into real estate, is having massive, massive success. Tamika Jones Clay, congrats on capping in the month of June. Next up, this person's been in the business for, you know, a couple of years now, Sarah Monday. Congrats on capping in the month of June. You've had incredible success and you continue to ride the wave of momentum. Congrats to you. Next up, this person's been in the business for all of 30 seconds. Bridget Ty, uh, get this. She's been in business for about six months, has already closed about $5 million in closed production. I think this picture is the perfect epitome of who her spirit and energy is. And if you know anything about Bridget, she's a ton of fun to be around. Bridget, congrats on capping in the month of June. Next up, we're halfway through. Nicole Worsich, 
and her husband, Paul, running an, also run another business uh, in the hairstyle business. Incredible people. Nicole's been in the in real estate game for about two years on the Style A Realty Group. Absolutely killing it. Serves her clients at the highest level. Congrats on capping in the month of June. Nicole Worsich. Next up, an incredible mother. Just recently had a baby a couple months ago. Moved. Ton of disruption. But she's like, what? Disruptions what? Jennifer Whitener, congrats on capping in the month of June and continuing on your stellar success in the real estate game. All right, next up, someone we love out here in Lake Country pours into our agents, gives people the time they need all the time and helps you get out of trouble whenever you need it. Steph Connard, a beautiful mother to Rosie. Congrats on capping in the month of June. Next up, I got five or six more, so stay with me. We got a lot of people who had a lot of success in the month of June, and I'm excited to share it with you. All right, next up, Natasha Jambrick, another incredible mother who sells big, has a big business out here in Lake Country, has an incredibly high price point, incredible, she does incredible things every single year. Natasha Jambrick, congrats on capping in the month of June. Another Lake Country person sitting in the room with me right now, Chrissy Klasky. Chrissy Klasky, congrats on capping in the month of June. Super stoked for you and your family as you get to take advantage of it. Next up, we heard from him earlier in the day as he's going out driving. Hopefully he's putting all this money to good use. John Lorenz, congrats to you and your wife, Becky, on capping in the month of June. Hopefully we raise a whole bunch of money for you on Saturday for Protect the Package and, and uh, in Cancer Research. Last three people continuing on the Lake Country trend. Probably, I would say, rivals me is probably one of the biggest Bucks fans in Milwaukee. Uh, I we text all the time during games, incredibly loud when he's in the office. I'm sure you know it. Has an incredible family whose kids are up to incredible things. Mike Schaefer, shout out to you. Congrats on capping in the month of June. And then two more people to celebrate out in Lake Country. We got Annie Stabler, a mother of four, who's incredibly talented, really engaging on social media. If you want to understand how to connect with your clients and communicate with them through social media, check out Annie Stabler. And then finally, we have Karen Trimble, the president. Well, I would, here's a really funny story real quick. Karen, congrats on capping in the month of June. And here's the story I always tell. Karen got into this business probably like three, four, five years ago. I'm not exactly sure when. And people come in and they say, how do I be successful? And I say, well, let me give you an example. There was a woman who came into this business in a matter of three years, went from nothing and 40 million. And they say, well, how did she do it? And I said, well, she used to be the president of the Arrowhead School District. She had a database that was a mile long and a mile deep, and she activated it and showed up to everything. Karen's the epitome of when you show up, the world is run by those who show up. You will see success when you activate your database at the highest level. Karen, congrats on capping in the month of June. All right, we're flipping it over. Lindsay Brannick, it's over to you for Tech Tuesdays. Oh. All right. Hey, guys. So this week's tech workshops are all about customizing your sales pipeline. So my goal is for you to sit down and really hammer this out. Um, and I really want everyone to take advantage of the full opportunities applet. Now, we all know there are five phases. When you go into the opportunity section, you see Cultivate appointment, active, under contract, closed. My goal is to get more agents using the cultivate and appointment sections within this applet. Um, and I don't know if a lot of people know that you can customize the stages that are within each of those phases. So you can really take full advantage of this entire section. So Charlie, next slide, it's gonna show where exactly you can customize these stages. Um, so you'll see that bottom screenshot so you can rename them, you can edit them, you can delete them, you can add to those. And so if you're using a spreadsheet, this is the area where you're going to nix that spreadsheet and implement it within command using these custom stages. And so within this, you'll also see you can add the probability. And so the great thing about adding the probabilities is that it represents the probability that an opportunity will go through all the way to close from this particular stage. So for example, if you're in the scheduled stage of the uh, appointment phase and you know that only one out of 10 of the appointments that you schedule will actually go through to close and get you a commission, um, then you're gonna add 10% to the stage. And so adding those probabilities allows you to track your potential gross commission income. And so you can actually see that GCI being calculated 
as you're adding to these stages and adding that probability within each stage. And so it's super robust. Um, it's an incredible tool that you can use for your business. And so along with that, you'll see those checklist items as well. And so that's where you'll get super detailed. You'll add all of your dates and deadlines in there. Um, and then along with that is you can actually send out client updates. And so it's an, another way to automate your communication with your clients as you're going through that transaction. And so this is not on by default. You would have to turn this on. You can set up your settings. Um, and so next slide, Charlie, I think I have a screenshot of what that looks like when you're configuring those settings. So you can choose what time those send out each day to your client. Um, if you don't have anything checked off or if you haven't you know, completed any of those tasks or, there, or those checklists, your client's not gonna receive an email. So it's only gonna happen within 24 hours of when you check something off. Um, and you can also choose who receives it. So if you want it going to the seller and co-seller, buyer and co-buyer. Um, so you can configure all of those settings within opportunities. Um, and then you see the client facing email. So it's a really nice, nice looking email. Um, if you have the listing connected with Within the opportunity, you're going to see that, that listing photo within that email. Um, and then it's going to detail what you've checked off, what's done, so that your client, again, can be updated on where you're at within that transaction. And it's just another way to communicate and keep them up to date. Um, so we're going to be covering all of that today during workshops um, in TOSA at 1 o'clock. Um, same training out in Lake Country on Thursday at 11. And then one other reminder, since I'm up on the opportunities um, topic, is you guys submit your commissions. Um, and I know this isn't completely obvious when you're on this screen, but make sure that you're submitting that commission, that blue uh, submit button for your commissions. Um, otherwise, the MCA's office will not be able to import the commission and then process your payment. So it's super important that you're hitting that submit button um, when you're done with your the commissions tab in the opportunity. All right, that's all I got. So again, um, schedule an appointment if you can't make training this week, but otherwise today at one o'clock in TOSA and then same training 11 o'clock um, right after productivity training um, in Lake Country on Thursday. Cool, thanks Lindsay. Guys, I want you to write something down. Quote, leverage is always more work before it's less. Okay, leverage is always more work before it's less. What do I mean by that? It's amazing to me how when I talk to so many agents, how people manage their sales pipeline through duct tape and spreadsheets and post-it notes and a million other things that they have no idea how to track. And then everybody says, oh, command, yeah, it has all these great features. Like I wanna automate my lead generation or I wanna automate my checklist, but I just don't have the time to do it. Guess what? Spend five, two to five hours on it, set it up once. And once you set it up the right way, leverage is always more work before it's less. Organize your life so that you have clarity to the potential pipeline you have and the income that it can generate for you. That's what Lindsay is talking about here. And if you want help setting it up, hit her up because she's willing to do whatever it takes to help you succeed by leveraging the tools that are available to you at your disposal. Awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. All right, guys, I'm flipping it over to Joan Reed. Sheriff Reed, what are we talking about today around dual agency and coverage? Good morning, everybody. Um, this is just a, a little caution because I'm starting to see some of these uh, questions pop up. And I just wanted to give everybody a short reminder of what dual agency is and if you can avoid it at, um, in your transactions. The next slide sort of breaks down exactly what we're talking about. It's multiple representation, which means all within Keller Williams. If there's a buyer and a seller with an agreement, a listing contract or a buyer agency agreement within Keller Williams, it's called multiple representation. If your party does not want designated agency and they choose maybe the middle section on either the buyer agency agreement or the listing contract, it means that they agree to Keller Williams agents being on both sides, but they don't agree to being designated. And that is the loophole, the danger, um, the puddle you don't wanna step in because, 
because we do so much business among one another, we have so many listings and so many good producing uh, buyer agents that we run into this possibility of dual agency um, inadvertently. So make sure that when you are signing up a listing or you're signing up a buyer agency agreement, convince your buyer or your seller to check that they agree to multiple representation with designation. That means we can designate a buyer agent, we can designate a seller agent. If they don't, if they or their lawyer choose number two, they agree to multiple representation but not designated agent, that puts handcuffs on both of both agents on both sides. They cannot negotiate for their client and they have to remain neutral and equal. Some things that I'm starting to see coming up are um, when the agent has the listing and the agent also is signing up the buyer as a buyer's agent. This also is the classic example of dual agency. Um, and in this situation, again, if you represent the seller and the buyer and you do not designate another agent to represent one or the other, you are in dual agency. You have to mark it on the second line in the offer to purchase saying you represent the buyer and the seller. And this is where the liability can happen. When you are representing both the buyer and the seller as clients, you have an obligation to put the deal together, but you cannot represent either one you cannot negotiate for either one. You cannot show the benefits of one side over another side when you're in dual agency. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, this is hard to do, um, especially if the seller is a long time client, especially if the buyer say is a family member. How can you step back and be neutral in situations where this, does not call for neutrality. It calls for really working for your client. So if you're in dual agency, you must remain neutral and equal. And if you don't, this is where the liability uh, factor pops up. So these hidden liabilities, if, you, if it comes to some kind of a disagreement, one or the other client is not happy with the way the transaction is going or the way the transaction ended or didn't end, this client can now waive this buyer agency agreement in a courtroom and say that you did not do what you said you were going to do. And you couldn't because you were on both sides. So my feelings for a long time as being a manager and being a real estate agent to avoid dual agency, especially when you're the listing agent and you have the buyer as much as possible. Um, there are too many places where you can go wrong and you want to protect your relationship with your signed clients. So make sure that they always check designated agency with multiple representation. So the next slide. All parties in one transaction must have chosen the same representation. And I, want, I can't make this stronger. If you have a listing and your client, your seller has check number two, multiple representation without designated agency, you really should be setting those appointments and explaining to the Keller Williams agent who wants to show it that they do not agree to designation, which immediately puts that other Keller Williams agent in a situation where they have to step back and be neutral and the listing agent has to be neutral. So make sure that that is, and please call me one-on-one -on -one if you have a situation where you don't really understand. But today, most buyers and sellers, they understand representation. They don't wanna be customers anymore. They want to be represented. And if there's dual agency in either no designation or you're the listing agent and signed on agreement with the buyer, you cannot represent either one of them fully. So is there one more Joni, slide? Yeah, that's, that's it. Joni, you know, thank you because I'll tell you guys for as hot as the real estate market is, uh, the attorney pool is just as hot and everybody is looking for a reason to come after you, your license and your E&L policy. 
Absolutely. So uh, when you have situations where you feel like you could have a risk or some sort of viable situation, feel free to reach out to Joan or to Steph because they are here to protect you and protect your license. And where we're seeing this the most is in dual representation when people are representing both the buyer and the seller because it's very hard to remain neutral and attorneys see that and they'll pounce on it. So we're not saying this to scare you. We're saying this more so of leverage Joan and leverage Steph to help you get through situations like this to mitigate your liability. Cool. Lastly, Great. Joan, and I'll, I'll just take this one real quick. Um, we've Great. had a few instances where uh, I get it, right? We're preaching everybody take the time off and and, uh, and step away from your businesses and things like that. However, right now, when June was probably the most robust residential real estate market in the history of Southeastern Wisconsin, we had several people who completely stepped away and shut things down and they missed dates and deadlines, okay? You can't do that. If you're gonna step away for vacation or you're gonna step away for your family or whatever it may mean, that's totally cool. We want you to do that and make sure someone's protecting your backside or hire transaction management to make sure that all your dates, deadlines, contracts, and everything like that are in order because we've had several instances where people go on vacation because they totally need to shut it down. And then they got themselves in some serious liability because they missed inspection deadlines and their client now all of a sudden is in a very precarious situation because the seller says, well, yeah, we, we said verbally we would agree to this, but you missed the deadline. Now the, the buyer is out a certain amount of money. And who are they going to come after? They're coming after you if you miss that. So it sounds crazy to me that we even have to bring this up. But the only time we bring up compliance issues is because we see them on a repeat basis where there's a trend. And so we use this as an opportunity to educate the group. Cool? Awesome. All right. We're bringing someone back to the program who's been, been off, not off, but just been in the background supporting your group at a high level for a little bit of while. And she's also seen a few things pop up. So Kimmy, what do we got coming on with documentation submission? Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm starting to see, and again, I know you guys are busy, a lot of stuff going on, which is great, but we have to stay in compliance with um, contract submittal for compliance review. Um, it ensures that most importantly for you, you get paid on time, you don't get fined. Um, and you know, if there's any corrections that need to be made to your documents that you have enough time to get that done before closing. So reminder that all files are to be submitted for review within seven days. So seven days is the key. So if you have a signed buyer agency agreement, that consultation folder must be submitted within seven days of that agreement signed. A signed listing contract, that listed folder must be submitted within seven days of that listing being executed. And same thing with an accepted offer. Seven days after the AO, the under contract folder must be submitted. We have always had a fine structure in place um, which you'll see here, this is outlined in your independent contractor agreement. If your files are late, there is a $100 fine. If they're submitted after closing, there, it's a $300 fine. Now I'll admit, I am more worried about those files that are late, like submitted the week before closing. Um, so, you know, if you're submitting on day eight, don't freak out, but um, I'm really paying attention to those files that are extremely late. So please get those submitted on time so that um, we can get you paid on time and you can avoid those fines. Also be sure you are fully submitting. So kind of going back to what Lindsay was saying, the screenshot below, you'll see there's a button that says submit to MC, make sure you're clicking that. And then if you look on the left-hand side, you can see the status of each folder, whether it's been submitted, approved. If it's marked open, I'm not going to see it. So we've had that situation come up a few times where agents have uploaded their files but are not fully submitting so it never gets to me to review. Um, the next slide I'm going to go through, um, you'll you see your list of required documents that you need to be, be uploading, but you do also need to upload additional documents that are executed throughout the transaction. So any amendments, and notices any contract related document must be submitted for compliance review. So you'll see there's a little button underneath the um, under contract folder or consultation folder that says add item, click that and then you're able to essentially add a, an, an additional placeholder so you can upload those additional documents. Um, I do encourage everyone to upload almost every document that's related to the transaction because you wanna treat your opportunity like an electronic file cabinet. 
So um, you I encourage you to upload title, paperwork, lien waivers, invoices, everything related to this transaction. But those kind of like non-contract related documents do not need to be submitted for compliance review. So I just encourage you to put those into a custom folder, which you'll see in the screenshot on the left-hand side, you can add multiple um, consult or custom folders. Um, and then finally, um, the last reminder is just updating your opportunity details. So a lot of this information I believe is like automatically populated when you enter your commissions. Um, but definitely double check after you enter or submit your commissions that A, most importantly, your estimated closing date is added. That ensures that I'm reviewing it prior to that date, um, that the property info is added. And then if you're utilizing those phases and stages as Lindsay was talking about today um, to move up and update those as well. So this again ensures that you get paid on time and um, to avoid any fines. Cool, Kimmy. Question, why is the home warranty waiver thing a part of compliance? So this is required for e &O. Our e &O coverage, we have a deductible, um, but that deductible is partially waived. If you have a certain number of, or if you have certain documentation, one of which is the home warranty. So we either need evidence that one was ordered so this could be a copy of an uh, invoice from the home warranty company. It does not need to be RWS home warranty or a waiver in writing from the buyer. So that's what that application essentially is, is they can check decline and sign it. And that would constitute as the waiver. Yeah, Kimmy, thank you guys. One of, one of the things I would reiterate and really, really stress to you is we don't bring these things up because we think we have to come with a, you know, I always talk about the carrot and the stick scenario, right? And, and we do it as a way to educate you because what we're seeing is people are moving so fast right now through transactions that details are getting missed. And when details are getting missed, that's when you put yourself in a uh, litigious possible, potential litigious situation. I'll tell you, in my opinion, uh, been in this business for a little while now and working with a lot of different people and agents and situations, I would say that Kimmy, Joan, and Steph are probably three of the best resources you have at your disposal in the industry. Uh, they are really here to be a resource and a partner for you. Um, and, and lastly, one of the things I'll talk about, or just touch on too that Kimmy touched on is, um, you know, there's all these things that we ask you to input into command. And if you ever get into, the reason why we do that is because of the amount of time it will save you in the event that you have to provide documentation is unbelievable. Because we've seen people, oh, I have to go through emails from the last two years to find everything and source it all and everything. And that takes a ton of time. But if you have it all in one place, which is what we're trying to get you to do it to, that electronic filing cabinet, when it's really clean and concise, will help you save time. And that's what these guys are here to do. They're here to help you save time. They're here to help you save money. And they're here to help you save your license in the event that something comes up. And we bring it up just because there have been a lot of um, people who are trying to take advantage of the current market and the fact that they know you have errors and emissions insurance. Everybody is coming after your insurance. So I don't use that as a way to try and scare anybody or use it as a, a stick. It's more so just to be real with you of what we see every single day that we try and protect you from in certain situations. Cool? Awesome. All right, Mandy, I'm flipping it over to you for upcoming trainings and events. And we have some killer stuff coming in for these guys to pour into their business. So what do we got? All right. Thank you. So we had a lighter week last week on training and education. We are back from the 4th of July and we have tons of value ads. So we'll start with Janine here is going to talk about a field trip that we have coming up on Thursday. Yeah. So great attendance and productivity class. You guys really thrilled about that. Um, this Thursday, a field trip to 4224 North Prospect in Shorewood. It's a, a listing of mine that's under contract. And it's going to be about how to have a successful open house, how to prepare for it, what to do when you get there. And also while we're there, how to show a house. So we'll have something on Facebook again, just to remind you of the address. So don't come to the market center. 4224 North Prospect Shorewood, be there or be square. 
Bye. <laughs> and Amanda today after team meeting. Hey there. So do come to the North Shore office at 1030 today um, for launch. It's a workshop today. We are putting together a guide to make the most of your week, set you up for success, keep your momentum going. So it's a weekly review and preview, something I use. It's something sometimes I forget to use and then realize how valuable it is. So come and put that together with me today at 1030. Awesome. Thanks, ladies. So a lot of good stuff. And then also tomorrow we have Dave Jinx is coming back to pour into the group another time. So Dave is absolutely phenomenal. He's one of the co-authors of the MREA. He does excellent training. This one is all about lead gen. So he is going to be pouring into you guys on how to fill your lead gen machine. And um, that's tomorrow at 11 a.m. Dave, he cuts right to it. He's all about the meat and potatoes. He you know, sometimes you're sitting in a training waiting for that, like one or two nuggets to take away. Dave, like the photo, he just gets right to it. And it's pages and pages of really great notes and information. So if you're going to go to a, a training this week, it's, you know, it's a phenomenal one. So don't miss that. We will record it um, if we can, but we'll try to get that too. So if you, if you're going to make something live, try to make that one live. Cause I'm not sure we can get you that recording. Um, so that's tomorrow at 11. Next slide. A little reminder for Mega Camp: tickets are on sale now. So you do have to buy your ticket with KW on mykw.com slash Mega Camp. And then we're doing our Milwaukee event as well. So that's a separate ticket that's only 20 bucks. Um, so the seats are filling up. We have a max amount of about 200. So if you're planning to go to that, please sign up now. Uh, and we have more details coming on that as we get closer to the event. Yeah, guys, one of the things I'll just touch on is if you understand your time value of money, and what I mean by that is, okay, take what you made last year in gross wages divided by how many hours you worked to figure out what your hourly rate is, right? And if you're trying to understand how and where you spend your time, you look at it and you say, okay, if my time is worth a thousand bucks an hour or more, which it should be, you need to understand what your time value of money is. But if it's a thousand dollars or more, if I put an hour into it, am I gonna get a two or three or four X return? And one of the things I would challenge you with is Dave Jenks, very few people are willing to talk about lead generation because not everybody knows or understands where their business comes from. Dave Jenks on Wednesday at 11 is incredible. And the last thing I'll plug is Mega Camp in August. We are hosting this event with the five offices in Milwaukee. We've invited Madison. We've invited Green Bay. We've invited Appleton. All of their top people plan on coming down. And if you want to understand how to pour into people in other markets or what they can do and things that you can take away from them, iron sharpens iron. So as you understand your time value of money, understand where you spend it in terms of your time to get the returns you're looking for. And we have some incredible things to get returns on your time here coming up over the next several weeks. All right, cool. Now I'm going to jump into the meat and potatoes of the lore report. And what is the market of the moment telling us, right? So lore stands for the language of real estate. And what is the market telling us? Here we go. Here are my reminders for the market of the moment. And I've been preaching this over the last several months because a lot of things are about to come out in trade publications talking about how robust the real estate market is, how robust the real estate market is. I mean, I heard it at every 4th of July party I went to. And I say, yes, and you have to understand our business was down 80% in the month of April and May last year. So it looks like the market is going bank gangbusters, which it is, it's really, really healthy, but you have to understand the perspective of what we're hurtling and what we're coming out of right now is actually a little bit deceptive. So here are my mar reminders for the market of the moment. One, the market is deceptive. You have to spread the market out to get a real picture of what's going on. Two, it's a humbling market. Despite everything that's going on, there's a lot of people having success and there's a lot of people who are very established that are struggling to figure out traction within the current market of the moment. It is humbling. Remember, great markets don't last, great agents do. And then lastly, you're not in it to have a great year, you're in it to build a great career. So what is the market telling us? Here we go. When you jump into it, and we've been going over this the last several months, so I'm not going to go into this in detail. One of the four metrics I pay attention to most of the most important to me, I pay attention to the lead metrics. Why? Because the lead metrics tell me what's coming down the pipeline as to where people are going to make money. If you look at the lag metrics, which in my opinion is all ego driven and what's everybody's always talking about, the lag metrics are, oh, how many closed units did you do? Or what's your closed sales volume? None of that matters because it's all based on prior activities and prior history. So if you look at lead metrics, 
What do I pay attention to? Listings taken units, listings taken volume, contracts written units, contracts written volume. This is across the Milwaukee Metro MLS. The reason why I highlight the lead metrics is if you go back to March, April, May of this year versus last year, and you look at contracts written units and listings taken units, it correlates to the successive month following as to what's gonna happen in the industry, right? So if you look at March, contracts written were up 14, contracts written volume was up 30. Look what happened in April. Closed units and closed volume was up 17 and up 30. Now, April with the lead metrics, it was up 40, up 63. May, it was up 23, up 42. Okay, so May, what happened in May? May, contracts written units were up 14, volume was up 26, listings taken was up almost 8%. Look at June. June, remember, was the bounce back month after all the stay at home stuff. June was a very, very good month in residential real estate 2020. And June of 21 was up 23% on closed units, up 44% on closed volume, hurdling a very good month, right? So what do I know? Listings taken units, looking ahead to July and August, September, listings taken units up 23% and listings taken volume up 23% as well. Very, very positive for leading metrics of what's gonna happen in the future. Contracts written units up 4%, contracts written volume up 8%. It seems a little bit of a dip from here, but again, remember, this is hurtling when everybody was staying at home. And this is also in the month of June last year, hurtling a very bounce back month. This is a very positive sign. Again, as we talked about, have we hit the apex yet? I'm not quite sure we have. That's why I'm very bullish on what July, August, potentially, I can't see that far out yet, potentially September. So how does it relate and correlate to people's businesses uh, as it relates within the brokerage industry? Here's what you need to know. MLS dollar close volume so far year to date is up 30%. The top 10 firms right here represent 65% of the close volume. Simply put, it's the 80-20 principle. But what you need to know is the 30% mark because what you'll see here is if your business is above positive 30%, you're taking share. If your business is down the, or below less than a 30% gross, you're actually losing share in the marketplace, okay? Success is outpacing the market average. So when you look here, Shore West up 17%, the number one player in the market at 15% share. KW up 48%. Again, the, the watermark here is above 30%. Above 30%, you're taking share. Below 30%, you're losing share. First Weber up 23 uh, Remax up six, and then you can see the rest of the group here that I'll send out as it relates to the brokerage activity uh, across the top 10 year to date so far in across southeastern Wisconsin of Milwaukee, Waukesha, Washington, Ozaki, and Racine counties. All right, when you look at it here, when we break it down by office location, again, I remind you, the watermark here is a 30% growth rate. If you're growing above 30%, you're taking share. If you're growing less than 30%, you're, you're not taking share. Okay, when you look at it, KW Innovation servicing Tosa, Elm Grove, and Brookfield up 161%. These guys are absolutely killing it and they're on a tear. They come in at number 30, the 30th largest office in the MLS, and it started last year on April 1st of 2020. If April 1st means anything to you, it means we started it at the worst possible time, and it's already the 30th largest office. Get this, KW Prestige up in Germantown, also similarly started at a similar time, just a little bit ahead. It's the 25th largest office up 83%. Jump into KW Lake Country, now cracks the top five. It's the fourth largest office in southeastern Wisconsin, up 101%. Again, the watermark here is if you're growing at a 30% clip, anything above that, you're taking share versus your peer group. Southwest over in Neverland is up 39%, and the juggernaut across the entire industry in southeastern Wisconsin, the North Shore office, up 48% than the largest single office in southeastern Wisconsin. If you look at this, guys, versus the peer group, the peer group, everybody right now is kind of growing, right? The rising tides lifts all ships, right? The tide is rising, all offices are growing. But if you really look at the growth trends and the growth rates around who you're partnering and who you're in business with, there is a clear differentiator as who is disrupting the market and helping people become more productive today than they were yesterday, right? When you break it down here by the lore metrics, the language of real estate, this is the scorecard of how you're doing. Again, success is outpacing the market average. And when you compare here for the North Shore group, you can see they're pretty much outpacing the market average on everything. If I were super stoked about any number on this page, there's two things I pay attention to. Listings taken units and contracts written units, up 19% and up 40% respectively. Those are huge numbers. 
Now, jump over to Lake Country, same thing. When you look at listings taken units versus your peers of the Metro MLS up 66% and contracts written units versus your peers that were up 13% versus Lake Country up 115%. These are stupid, stupid numbers in terms of the level of productivity that this group, all groups are seeing. Incredible stuff. And I'll show you how this success correlates to your bottom line, AKA your income. Now, when we jump over to the Tosa Elm Grove guys, right? And over uh, an innovation drive, here's what you need to know. Caldwell Banker up 3.6%. Again, this area specifically, and I dove just into this area, is up 31% over the last 12 months. So they're actually trending up slightly versus the peer group. Firefly is up 75. First Weber is up 27. KW is up 50% within this area. And Shore West up 12%. The incredible, incredible growth trends across all locations here. Incredible stuff. So what does this mean and how do you correlate this to success in terms of your incomes? Here's what you need to know. Last month, we closed, we paid agents across KW Milwaukee $6.8 million. Now, mind you, last year, June was very, very successful. This is a 75% growth rate on agent income in the month of June versus last year. 75%, 6.8 million. For perspective, if you wanna do me any favors, send Jen and Emily a note of gratitude because those guys closed close to 500 units to get you guys paid $6.8 million. And we try our darnest to get you paid within 24 to 48 hours of getting the documents. But when you're closing 500 units and managing 6.8 million to make sure that we get it to your bank accounts, it's a lot to manage. So send those guys a note of gratitude because we cannot thank them enough at the sheer size and scale and scope they manage. Now, when you look at this from a year-to-date perspective, here's what you need to know. We've paid out $25.8 million in agent income so far year-to-date. This is a growth rate of 53%. Now, mind you, we grew 75% in the month of June. What does that tell me? It means that we're, we're on a trend that goes like this, right? $25.8 million, it's a 53% growth rate. And not only does it mean gross commission income is growing, it means the profit share pool is growing in an incredible, incredible clip. In the month of June, on, on July 21st, for those of you who are participating in the profit share pool, we will pay out 125K in profit share on July 21st for June activities. This is a 53% increase over June of 2020. Year to date, this is an incredible number. We'll, we'll, we will pay agents to work at KW over half a million dollars to remain at KW, right? Over a half a million dollars, people are participating in the profit share pool. It's 142% increase versus June or versus year to date of 2020 versus last year. Incredible, incredible success. Incredible, incredible results as it relates to return on your investment. Um, Guys, thank you for being in business with us. We sincerely appreciate your partnership. Next up, Agent Awards and Success. Here's the thing. We'll post this, and there are a ton of people to celebrate. And I want to celebrate each and every one of you, but I don't think you want to hear me sitting up reading off every single name for the next hour. So it may sound like I'm about to go through the Kentucky Derby, but I want to call out a few people. And uh, we will make sure that this is public so that we can share and celebrate in you and that you can share in your success with your friends, family, and your database. All right, here we go. Month of uh, June, Home Run Club. In my opinion, this is the highest award you can get within a single month. Why? Because it means you got one listing taken, one contract written, one contract closed. Okay, that's great. What does that actually mean? It means you got paid in the month of June and you're probably gonna get paid in July. So there are close to 80 people on this list in the month of June. It's our highest list we've ever had as a company history. Big shout out to everybody who had incredible success in the month of June, ensuring that you had income for your families today and then ensuring you had income for your families tomorrow. Congrats on your success. Next up, Million Dollar Month Club, our largest group of people that have ever participated in the Million Dollar Month Club. You can see here an incredibly successful group of people. Uh, again, shout out to everybody who had an incredible month of June. What does it mean? It means we've just simply paid out 75% more gross commission incomes to you guys in the month of June uh, than we have in prior June. So congrats on everybody's success in the month of June. And we will make sure we post this and tag everybody so that you can share in your successes with your database and sphere. All right, next up, Lake Country. June individual awards. What do we got? June volume. These guys said, Lake Country said, well, 
yeah, million dollar month is nice. But the top three said, I'm going to go for a two and a half million dollar month, right? Big shout out to Mary Beth Milky, Natasha Jambrick, Annie Stabler for, for all the top three in Lake Country. So when you look at it from a year to date perspective, Robin, Robin McCormick leading the pack just over six mil, John Lorenz at 6.2. Ooh, we may have had a little hiccup there. My apologies. We'll get that fixed. And Annie Stabler nipping right at their heels at 5.9. And then when you look at it from a year to date units perspective, Lorenz leading the pack at 21, Nikki Kunick at 14, and Robin McCormick at 10. Robin McCormick having a heck of an average price point. Congrats, Robin. All right, here we go. Team awards for the month of June. Gallagher Lake Country leading the pack in June at 7.9. Karen, uh, the team Trimble across the entire team at 4.7. And Plooster Property Group right at their heels at number three, 4.6. When you look at it from a year-to-date perspective, Gallagher Lake Country at 28. Team Trimble at 16. Plooster Property Group at 13. Market gives you volume. Agents control their units. Shout out to Plooster Property Group. 42 closed units so far year-to-date with Team Trimble at 29 and Gallagher Lake Country at 22. All right, here we go. Individual volume across North Shore and innovation. Sarah Oberbrunner in the month of June leading the pack at 3.5 mil. Lindsay Weber right on her heels as she's about to have her third child. Congrats, Lindsay Weber, who's about to uh, have another child. Bridget Ty, who we mentioned earlier, at 1.7 mil in the month of June. Alyssa Burkoff, Julia Litkin, John Molitor, Ann Kleber, Jennifer Kootenay, Carla Florence, and Manny Manny Patino in the month of June. Shout out to the top 10 in the month of June for individual agents. Here you can see, again, the market gives you volume. The agents control their units with Molitor leading the way with Nick Fetting right on his heels at 27, Sarah Oberbrunner at 26. And you can see the remainder of the top 10. Big shout out to Heather Townsend and Simonis rounding and out. And then as it relates to individuals for year to date volume, Molitor leading the way as he has all year, but Sarah Oberbrunner said, uh-uh, Molitor, I'm coming right for you at 8.2. She's got some stuff up her sleeves. I've seen her pipeline. It's robust. Nick Fetting at 6. Lindsey Weber at 4.6. Joey Carini having a great year at 4.4. Bridget Ty, Julie Lickin, Peter G., Carla Florence, and Schweppe rounding out the top 10 year to date. All right, here we go. June team volume. Falk Rubin Gallagher having the best month in their team's history. 25.4 million. Falk Rubin Gallagher team, congrats on your success. With JSG right behind them at 25.1 mil in the month of June. And SRG at 17. Then when you look at it, spots four through 10, it's always a dogfight there where you can see Double Bolt Realty having an incredible June at 3.9. Desti's Nicolet Group, Duvall, On Point, Wright Group, and a key home lounging out the top 10. Here you go. Units year to date for the teams. JSG at 206 closed units. Falk Group and Gallagher 128. Stale Realty Group 94. Duval Group. I see you. Come on at 50. A key home. KCN and on point right there. Nipping at your heels. Let's see where this rounds out the back half of the year. And then you can see here year to date team volume. Guys, the success the teams are having, the big groups are having, they have figured it out right? They have figured out how to take share because they, here's the one thing they know how to do. They know how to lead generate and they know how to manage their communication with their clients, right? JSG at 89 mil, Falk Rubin at 80, Stale Realty Group 55. You can see the rest of the top 10, right? Spots four through 10. It's the biggest dog fight in Southeastern Wisconsin real, uh, real estate. There you go. Guys, congrats on an incredible month of June. And I'm going to round it out with the June market insights. And what is the market telling us that we need to be prepared for to take advantage of the market of the moment? So here you go. Months of supply inventory. Here's what you need to know. A balanced market is six months of supply. In June of 2019, again, I'd like to compare of 2019, a more historical market. The market, a balanced market. Or, sorry, June of 2019 was 2.7 months. May of 21, or sorry, June of 21 was 1.5 months. We saw an uptick from May over, one sec, sorry, uh, a 44% decrease in months of supply inventory versus 2019, right? This is all, it's building, right? We hit rock bottom on months of supply inventory, it looks like in May, and we're going to build back up, and I'll share with you some more insights as to why I believe that. Days on market, how, uh, how long are listings staying on the market? Here's what you need to know. In June of 2019, it was 36 days, which was already incredibly fast in which listings were selling. In June of 21, it was 27 days, okay? June was the second lowest days on month metric reported in the last two years, only second to May the month before, which was the lowest we've seen in the last two years. 
We are those starting to rebound and I'll show you why in a second. Now, sales absorption, it's the percentage of inventory that goes under contract. 47% more of the total inventory went under contract in the month of June than what in 21 versus what we saw in 2019. It means that, that listings are coming to the market and moving through the market very, very efficiently, right? And people are making good price appreciation, which I'll talk about in a second. Units under contract. In the month of June of 21, we closed 2,937 units. I apologize, I need to update my slide. But in the month of June, we closed 20, the market closed 2,937 units. It was the second highest number of units under contract in the last two years, right? Last year, August of 2020, it eclipsed the 3,000 mark. It's an 11% increase over what we saw in June of 2019. Now get this, here's what you need to know. Oh, yeah, well, we'll get there in a sec. So units under contract, so this is uh, indicative of future closings was up 11%, despite the fact that we had 25% less inventory. Now, closed units, it was up 11% versus June of 2019. June of 21 had more closed units than any month in the last two years. There were more closings in Southeastern Wisconsin in June of 21 than there have been in the last two years. Incredible, incredible stuff of what's going on in the marketplace. This is why I say, I'm not quite sure we've hit the apex of what's going on. Now, new inventory units, this is what everybody wants to know. What's going on with inventory? It was up 17% versus June of 2019. There were 4,100 new inventory units. Now, if you compare that to the units that went under contract, which was 2,900, it means we gained about 1,200 new units that didn't go under contract in the month of June, which is positive. It means we are rebounding from the inventory scenario that we've been facing for the last 12 months. Now, the other thing that I don't talk about frequently, but something you should be paying attention to, expired inventory of a two-year overview. Expired units are down 21% versus June of 2019. And the last four months were the lowest four months of consecutive expireds we've seen in two years. So what does that mean? As soon as you guys list a home, you're pretty much, there's a high likelihood you're gonna get an offer and get the thing through the system. Very, very few expired listings are coming to the marketplace. Lastly, total inventory. Well, I have a few more things. Total inventory. This is what you need to know. This is the bounce back. We hit rock bottom total inventory of February of 21. We're still down 25%. So I would say we're still in recovery mode. But the fact that we picked up 1,200 new units more than went under contract in the month of June means that the inventory game is actually leveling out, which is a positive thing for this group. We need inventory to balance out a little bit to alleviate the pressure on the market. And seeing this continued trend of total inventory is positive. So despite the fact that inventory was down 25% of June this year versus June of 2019, you got to remember perspective is important. It used to be down anywhere from 40 to 50%. Now, what does all this pressure mean from a pricing standpoint? When you look at pricing metrics, I looked at a couple different metrics. I looked at the average price across the market. I looked at the median price across the market and I looked at price per square foot, right? Average price over the last two years, June of 21 versus June of 2019 is up 21%, okay? Median, which is the direct middle of all transactions. It's probably a more true indicator of price. The median average price point has jumped 15% over the last two years, okay? And then lastly, we talked about this uh, right before 4th of July. We talked about pricing metrics as it relates to price per square foot. The reason why I like price per square foot is it's a static measure when you look at pricing. Price per square foot over the last two years is up 26% across the five county metro area in southeastern Wisconsin. 26%. So when someone says to you in line at pick and save or in line at Sendix or whatever and they say, hey, what's going on in the market? Well, Price per square foot's up 26%. It means you've gained a ton of equity on your net balance sheet. All right, so here's my recap for you. I threw a ton of numbers at you and it was a very robust, a lot of stuff going on. Here's my grocery store script for you of the market of the moment. So when you run into your database or you go to a party and people ask you what the heck is going on, here's what you need to know. Inventory's climbing back out of the hole the 2020 dug. It's only down 25%, which is a considerable improvement considering that it would used to be down anywhere between 40 and 50%. So being only down 25% is actually an improvement, okay? 
We're spinning a positive message here. So if people are in the market to buy, we're helping alleviate concerns as to, I don't want to buy right now. It's not a good time to buy. Okay, well, here you need, here's what you need to know. New inventory is coming to the market is outpacing units that are going to under contract. This is how that we're repairing the total inventory situation. Buyer demand remains incredibly strong. Listings are still moving through the system extremely efficient, efficiently. And average days on market sits at 27 days, which is the lowest we've seen, one of the lowest we've seen in two years. Okay. Economy 101. So what is the, how does this impact pricing with the tight supply and incredible levels of demand? Prices will appreciate. Supply, demand, Econ 101. Over the last two years, here you go. Average price is up 21%. Median price is up 15%. Price per square foot's up 26%. There's your grocery store script of the market of the moment. Guys, it's 10.01. We finished right at an hour. It was a lot of stuff. We had a lot of people to celebrate. A lot of people are having incredible success. Thank you guys for all you do. If there's anything we can do to better serve you, feel free to hit us up. Lake Country crew, Steph and Britt are going to take over the Lake Country meetup. Mandy is going to lead the uh, new listings and buyer needs for those that want to stick on with North Shore and Tev crew. All right, guys, have an incredible day. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks.